Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overall Series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.2. In this episode, I hope to try and launch a Mars mission again. We have a bit of a tight time frame here. The Earth to Mars transfer is in 88 days, so that's not a long time to build this rocket. Uh, we see 146 days. I thought it was much more than that. Let me put the fairing back on. Okay, 160 days. Wow, the fairing takes like 14 days to build. That's pretty severe. I uh, wish we could do without it, but I don't think we can. Uh, so this is uh, the Navigator 3, which has upgraded uh, RCS ports because we got new technology. So, uh, and of course the upgrade between Navigator 1 and Navigator 2 was to use the RCS blocks instead of unidirectional ports. Um, it also has solar panels on this stage, and instead of an Agena engine, we now have an Astris engine, which is more efficient and has infinite... Uh, oh, wait a minute. Uh, I forgot something. I just noticed the feed pressure too low. We need a service module tank here. Let's make sure of that, and utilization should be... Well, it can be higher than that. Yeah, I'm just checking to see whether that really materially changed the rocket. I think I need to up the the duration of this now. Okay, how's our avionics through that stage? Avionics is fine through there. Let's get the fairings on. Then for the next stage we have an Agena engine. It's actually tucked in here. Avionics is fine. We've got a Thor avionics unit. We've got little uh, hydrazine tanks there. Just a little bit for orientation if we need to relight this stage to start our burn for Mars. The next stage is a new engine I unlocked. This is the RD0110. And I don't know, uh, well, I mean, I don't know how test flight is going to handle it. Uh, that is an open question. Its max burn time is 4 minutes and 10 seconds. So we are under that. We are at 4 minutes right now. Now, actually, before we pack that in, I'll add another controller to this stage and then make it larger. So we'll add another Thor avionics unit, which is my best avionics unit. And then make this taller. At the bottom we have four LRA9s, which is a configuration you've seen from me before. Now people do like to point out that a high TWR means you can get to orbit with a low delta V. But the, the point is not trying to get to orbit with a low delta V. The point is getting as much payload to orbit as you can. And so you'll notice whether it's a Saturn V, Falcon 9, or even the boosterless versions of Atlas V and other such rockets, their base uh, thrust to weight ratio is not that high. Uh, when you add boosters, strap-on boosters to them, of course it goes up, but the base thrust-to-weight ratio is not very high, and that is because they're optimized for delivering payload, and if you're interested in just uh, getting to orbit with 8,700 meters per second of delta V, well, you're losing the chance to add a little bit more fuel and add a little bit more payload given the same engines. So that is a thought. You can do it, of course and uh, maybe it's more fun that way but anyway I think 1.41 is quite alright I did get the upgrade to them uh, it's on this LRA9 NA-7.1 and 2 minutes and 45 seconds is the max so we're alright now the thing is it's gonna take a while to build it and we only have 88 days so we're going to have to rush it a little bit taking a look at contracts while I'm at it we've got lunar flyby again lunar impactor lunar orbit I think we could probably start with flyby, flyby, get into orbit, and then impact it. I think that's a thing we can do now. And they give enough time, uh, orbit four years, impactor three, and flyby four years. So I'm just going to pick those up to do that mission. Um, uncrewed moon landing is a separate thing, though. They give us eight years for that. I... I don't know if I want to do that or first spacewalk first. I feel like I want to do the uncrewed moon landing first. So I'll pick that up as my seventh contract. Okay. Let's say I want to rush build a little bit. 
Well, that already gets us within the time frame, so that's good enough. Uh, as far as upgrades go, hold on. Uh, do we have any technology researching? Yeah, we do, and it does take a long time, it looks like. Um, so I'm going to invest some in little upgrade points. I wonder when we unlock the second build slot. I think that's good enough for now. Yeah, I would have liked a second build slot. We've got some sub substantial amount of time. I shouldn't have spent so much rushing it. Oh well, I should have done the upgrade points first. So the Navigator 3 on the Tiger is complete and we can roll it out, but it's 27 days to the Mars transfer window. And I noticed we have a Venus transfer window in 144 days. So maybe I'll build another one for Venus. And if all works well with the rocket on the Mars launch, we can launch the Venus one right after that. Uh, if not all goes well, maybe we can edit it. So I'll have another one baking while we do the launch of the Navigator 3 to Mars. Okay, here we are. Let's target the moon. That is just uh, a reference for me. You can't target something outside of Earth's sort of system. You can't target Mars and expect a relative inclination there. There are other ways of lining up with Mars, but I choose not to do that. And besides, it's not that important because when you exit Earth's SOI, you're going to have the momentum of Earth and you're not really going to be able to correct your inclination until you get to some sort of of node with respect to Mars unless we happen to be at the ascending or descending node the relative inclination to Mars isn't so important and even this I don't have a pressing need to correct it it's just nice to have some sort of reference and I'll try and uh, tweak it a little bit I'm sure okay so here we are throttle up SAS is on and ignition and launch game crashed wow what a time for it to crash okay well uh, hopefully it'll still be on the pad when I get back okay looks like we are go for launch again throttle up SAS on um, I will target the moon again here we go again. Ignition. And launch. Smart ASS. Everything looking good. We're going transonic. Should be around max Q, past max Q. Now one thing I did was I action grouped two of the engines. They're in sets of two as you can see. So I can shut off two of the engines to limit the g-forces. And I will do so now. Two engines are shut down. Ah, but that does increase the burn time of these engines. Hmm, I forgot about that. So these might be burning longer than they should. We'll see. Okay, everything looking good so far. 25 seconds till this stage is out. I think they are past their rated burn time. But that's good. Set. Ignition. Ignition of the RD0110. Looks to be good. Fairing set. Bearing separation is good. Alright. Let's see about correcting some of that relative inclination on the fly here. Okay, I'm extending the Omni antenna on the payload. Now I did verify that Action Group 1 was the Omni antenna, but it's not activating, so I'll just have to do it manually. So this is the first time I'm using this particular engine. It has the benefit of being a very good specific impulse engine, 326, and it's got serious thrust, uh, almost 300 kilonewtons, which makes it uh, fairly useful, but no restarts. So more like a second stage engine. 
Again, we have the Gina engine as our third stage engine, and it has two ignitions. Okay, good burn from the 0110, SEP. And a Gina, okay. Uh, I think I've got it on a configuration where... Here, let's just start it. Uh, where it's now pressure fed. So now it's not going to need uh, ullage. It does need ullage. So that's nice. Uh, so our new technology allows that configuration, and that configuration also has better specific impulse, I think. Okay, here we go, and shut down. All right, 265 by 174, and we can relight this, so we'll get the 569 meters per second is got stored there. All of our fuels are storable, so that's good. Let me plot for Mars. Okay, well, we have a trajectory where if I burn 3,726 prograde around Earth and then a mid-course adjustment burn 830, I will be crashing into Mars. So that, you know how I love trajectories that crash into things. Uh, so yeah, that's about 4,500, 4,600 altogether. We have that. So let's say that that's the way we're going to go. Okay, so in 38 minutes, I'm going to lock all the fuel up in the stack. Right now we still have one of the Thor avionics units, so uh, our electric charge is draining more than it would. But yeah, well, the solar panels are charging a bit, but not optimally. Um, I'm obviously worried about that, but I think it'll be all right. Okay, so now let's time warp to it and then turn because we really don't need to set ourselves up too finely and then deal with persistent rotation. Oh, we don't have connection. Shoot. Well, that will be a problem. Let's see, are we likely to regain connection? Uh, there's a chance. There's a chance. Has to be on this side. Has to be on this location. We have to connect through Australia or one of the satellites that are orbiting. The satellites that are orbiting could be a little bit more of a help. I wish. We'll just go when we can and uh, just thanks to our Delta V, I suppose. It might be that what we need to do is launch a new satellite network. We haven't really done the satellite network, per se. I've just sort of relied on stuff we tossed up. Once again, I've replotted, and once again, we're approaching the node with no connection. Now we've got a connection. Why wait? RCS on. Oh shoot, lock that tank. Oh right, the little tanks. I forgot about those. Well, let's just... Yep, a gene engine, let's just go. Gotta target Earth with the antenna, activate. Okay, separation. Ignition. Okay. Astra's engine is good. And we're continuing. Plenty of hydrazine left to turn all over the place. So that's good. And we still have the payloads fuel locked. So we've got about 800 meters per second up there to use. Should it be necessary? Which it will be, because I don't think we have enough in this stage to do the mid-course adjustment. Especially since the mid-course adjustments probably going to be more than I would like, given how far off of the intended node we are. Okay, we should make some adjustments. No, 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 don't move. Okay, well, it'll just be spinning around. Um, yeah. Let's see if a pure mid-course adjustment without any... No, I think we need to do something around here as well. That's a bit far off. All 
Okay, we have another crash course. Let's try and do this as precisely as possible, but um, it's finicky because I have to tune it to one one hundredth of a meter per second. That's never ideal. By the way, I also have little tiny ports, or I should have, at the bottom of this. I wonder what... Oh, there they are. Just in case we had some extra trouble turning, we've got added hydrazine ports there. In fact, we've got placement, uh, placement of ports all over this thing. Now, there's the question... Was the problem with MechJeb Smart ASS purely a result of the placement of my ports? Um, I don't think so. Um, it, it just jitters around a lot. Uh, here, uh, I'll, I'll cut out that and I'll control it myself. It's not that hard to go directly to the, the node and just hold there. But Smart ASS just wants to jiggle about. It's not because of the placement of the ports. I can do it myself easily. Um, it's just Smart ASS is not doing it very well. <sighs> Alright, well anyway, let's uh, time warp. And let's do this burn here. Oh, vapor and felines. Ah, this one does need stuff to be settled down. Thankfully it has infinite ignitions. Okay, we have a Mars encounter. Trying to minimize the periapsis, and that's it. 150 and 150,000 kilometers, and I'm gonna turn off RCS temporarily. Until well, can we orient to the sun yet? No. Oh yes, yes we can. Okay. Caps lock. Well, that should be fine. Let me plot the mid-course adjustment given our current situation. We have a plot for 816.7 meters per second in 72 days. And that will get us a crash course to Mars. We are recharging for now. Alright, we will take it. 72 days. Let me see what our build situation is. Because we've got that Venus launch possibility. Um, so yeah, we can do the mid-course adjustment and then visit that. Okay, let's do that. Watching carefully our electric charge, of course. Now, it's a lot better once we start time warping because of the low power mode. Let's verify. We will be... Oh, doesn't look like we're crashing into Mars anymore. That's quite a big difference. Um, let us adjust that again. Probably all the RCS burning messed it up. I think we'll just go and then hopefully I'll be able to do it. Let's see, is the Gina settled? Nope. Okay, now it is. And it's not the Agena, it's the Asterisk. Alright, set. Oh, yeah, right. Um, separation takes 71 seconds. Okay. Okay, there we go. This engine is active. Yeah. Alright, so now we can continue. Oh, uh, attitude. Oh, shoot. That I turned. Hold on. I seem to have turned off RCS somehow. That's gonna take a while. Power and control seem nominal. Once we start time warping, it'll recharge much faster. Okay, no, 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 don't, don't RCS. Oh, right. I just turned RCS off, but it takes forever. Okay, just let it spin for a bit. Let's see now. Yes, we have a crash course at Mars. I'll just keep it like that. Probably the R RCS maneuvers will bring us further away, so it should be all right. Uh, speaking of which, let me, let me just go plus normal. Okay, that's fine. Our orbit is fluctuating. Um, actually, it's not fine. I do want SAS on. Because of persistent rotation. 
and the fact that I want to keep oriented to the sun. All right. Oh, we've got a long trip to Mars. Oh, right. We have the Venus mission to launch. Hmm. Well, everything has worked fine with this. I don't see any reason not to go with the Venus mission. Let's add an SOI change alarm for this mission. God, it takes a long time, huh? Yeah, it's a Mars encounter in a year. It's really, it's definitely not a Holman transfer because we had to wait until we had communication at Australia. I guess with Venus, it's not going to be that way because we have to burn on the opposite side of the planet. But then again, we've time warped some days. I, I don't know how it's actually oriented. Okay, well, let's complete the other navigator. We'll launch the Venus mission, and then we'll see how both of them turn out in the next episode, I think. All right, here we go. Same rocket, same payload. Navigator 3 on the Tiger rocket. But different destination. This one for Venus. SAS on. Throttle is up. And... No, well, I guess we'll do the targeting the moon thing again, just for tradition's sake. Yeah, relative inclination is horrible. Hmm. That's that's pretty extreme. On the off chance that we're on a node of some kind, I'm gonna toggle pump and time warp a little bit just so that we're we don't mess up our inclination accidentally. All right, nighttime launch it is. I'll I'll take this right now. All right, throttle up. SAS is on. Ignition. Oh, we lost one engine. Oh, shoot. Um, hmm. I think the gimbling can, like, barely compensate. If I knew which engine, eventually we can shut off its other pair. But I don't know whether that's the pair that's action group to zero or the one action group to one. So that's a bit of a problem. But so far, it seems like we're holding. Good thing we had a high initial thrust to weight ratio, huh? Uh, but, oh, uh, we're having some control issues. Whoa. Well, I mean, no surprise that we have control issues. Under the circumstances, I don't think I need to do an engine shutdown. Probably better to just let them all run now. Again, since I don't know whether I'd be turning off two engines or one engine. What's interesting is it's not actually reading much use of our yaw or pitch to control this. You'd expect a pretty persistent use of... I guess it's pitch that it's using. It's using that much only. So actually we had a lot of... A lot more room for error there. I think I've uh, delayed the rotation too much. We should have flattened out a long time ago. And actually now I will turn off... Okay, it looks like we only have one engine. Yeah, we had too much G-force. Well, with one engine, we can't control roll. But it's all right. No, maybe it's not so all right. We'll see. Okay, set. And ignition. Okay. Second stage now has control. Fairing set. Yeah, I don't know to what extent we can get to orbit on the next engine. We'll have to see. It'll be a tight call. So we did lose. Uh, we did lose about 500 meters per second. 
Sep. And ignition. And shut down. Okay, but we made it to orbit with 120 meters per second left, so more like 400 meters per second wasted. We'll lock some of the fuel up here. Alright, we appear to have a crash course for Venus, but there, there are a few catches. First of all, uh, it's no, there's no mid-course plane change because we're trying to hit it at one of the nodes. I believe it's the ascending node, and so that's a little bit touchy. But making it even worse is the fact that we have an unintentional moon encounter. Uh, so we're passing by the moon 3,500 kilometers, which would actually fulfill the moon flyby, I think. I think uh, that's within the moon flyby range. But we have to pass by the moon in order to hit Venus. We can't really wait for the moon to get out of our way, because uh, it's over here. We'd have to wait a number of days before it gets totally clear. So that's the situation there. Thankfully, I upped the patched conic levels so I can see what happens out at Venus even though uh, we've got this moon encounter. By default, you wouldn't be able to see that. Um, yep, another catch obviously is communication. And I have no idea whether we'll have communication over there. It doesn't appear to be in range of any particular communication site. But let's find out. Let's try this. Uh, we have communication now. You know, this is not a bad time to start out. Okay, uh, node, RCS. Oh, no connection. Well, okay, we just lost connection. So that was highly temporary through that location, it looks like. Maybe we will get another link somewhere. I need longer range stuff. I mean, clearly it's possible to connect to the Lancer from here. But we just need more antennae. I only put one of the Omnis. Well, that is troubling. Let me go around once. That's bound to change things quite a lot. For instance, our moon encounter is now off by 5,000 kilometers. But there's bound to be all sorts of inaccuracies. Wow, you use a lot of hydrazine to turn. Okay. Um, everything seems fine here. Ignition. Oh. Insufficient resources to ignite. Well, okay. I mean, we didn't need that 120 anyway. Okay. Separation. I have no idea why. What was it talking about? Ignition. Oh. Yeah. Right. Fuel unlocked. I'm not sensing any happy things here. Flame out, no propellant. Shut down, activate. Um, let me go to the space center and then jump back and see if it works. Okay, let's try that again. Is fuel settled? Well, it says unstable, so uh, push forward. Very stable ignition. Okay, now we're going. Well, let's get one of these dishes to target Earth and activate. Mm, why are we deviating? Uh, hmm. Okay, Smart ASS is not holding us at the node. Let me try that again. Alright. Sometimes it has to be reminded. And shut down. Alright, let's do some fine tuning here. Let's redo all the things. Wow, we've got a crash course at the moon. That's not going to be very helpful. That's not what we want at all. No, we must not crash at the moon. That's not going to help us reach Venus.
Okay, crash course at Venus, and what is the situation at the moon? It's a pretty big correction, but since we don't have to do a mid-course adjustment, it's not that bad. Uh, 4,000 at the moon, which is close to what we had initially plotted. Okay. We need to settle the fuel down. Oh, it says very stable. Okay, here we go. Let's see what's happening. Okay, well, it's a pretty close pass at the moon. What does it do for us at Venus, though? Ah, uh, we're still pretty far away from Venus. Let's see. Let's see what's going on here. And that's, that's pretty close. Well, it's not the crash course I wanted. Can we get that still? Okay, there we go. Crash course. Okay, we are recharging. Let's see what that did to us at Venus. Still a crash course, okay. But moving around a bit. Alright. Well, I think I'll leave it here, actually. Yeah, I think this is the place to leave it. Actually, let me get into interplanetary space first, and then we'll, we'll part company with this probe. And we'll check out what it does along with the Mars probe next time. Just sneaking by Venus. Uh, not Venus, the moon. Let's not attract any attention. Oh, uh, did we have to do science close to the moon or something? I think we might have missed that. Um, lunar flyby. Unmanned. I, uh, yeah, we just have to transmit something. I think even if it's uh, not at the close altitude. Like visual observations. Okay, uh, high over the moon accounts. Transmit. Okay, that... Contract is fulfilled. Excellent. Okay, we have left Lunar SOI and now leaving Earth SOI. Okay, I believe we're on escape now. I mean that we have escaped. And focusing view on Venus, we still have a crash course. So all is well. And if we set the alarm... The Venus encounter will be in 113 days. Alright, so we'll be paying attention to the Venus probe first and then the Mars probe in the next episode. But uh, for now, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Oh, let's make sure it is pointing at the sun. Okay, good. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did enjoy this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.